So it's been a little while since I've done my video on restoring brushed motors and I've got a lot of questions from you guys so I thought maybe it's time to revisit some of those things and try to be a little more detailed and break it up into several smaller videos instead of that one great big one. So first off what we have here um, this is a, an old Acrotec racing motor build plate. These aren't made anymore unfortunately because it's a great product um, but basically it's just a a spot to hold everything. You could do the same thing with a bucket or a series of buckets or whatever, but anyway. So here we have a Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Pro 540 motor, um, which is completely worn out. So we're going to start just by taking it apart, disassembling it, putting everything out on the tray. First thing we want to do is take off the springs, and the way you do that is this top portion here, you push that in, and it will lift up away from this little catch. So we push that in, lift it up and away, and it will unwind as a spring wheel, so you want to hold on to it the whole time. Then you can lift it off the post and pull the other end out of the brush hood. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the brushes, and that'll probably give us a good indication of how worn this motor could be. And yeah, this is a very, very, very worn motor. Uh, it's no wonder it stopped working. So if you take a look, this is our brush, and this pushes up against the commutator with the pressure of the spring pushing it in, and that's what creates our connection. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, again, very, very worn. These are completely worn out. Um, basically, we'll throw them away. Just for a point of reference, for comparison in the size, this is a new brush. And this is the brush that's in the motor. So if we hold these up, you can see the difference. Now the next thing we want to do is to look at the can itself and you'll notice that on the end bell portion here we have a series of marks. There's one, two, three, four of them. And what we want to do is we want to see on the can if there's any sort of an indication. And on this Holmes Hobbies motors there's actually a zero here on the can itself. And we want to see which mark is it that's hooked up against that zero. And it happens to be the third mark away from the positive line. So I want to make a note of that so when we put it back together we can put it back together the same way to start with. And you can see you have the same marks here on this other side. So it is important to note which side those marks are lined up against a zero with. Now once we have the brushes out we can take out the screws on either side here We can lift the end bell off. And this is where we start to see a lot of the dirt and grit that caused those brushes to wear out so fast. So first thing we want to do is to get our screws out. And we're going to set those there. And yeah, let's get a towel. <laughs> start by tapping a bunch of this stuff out of there. So this motor came out of a wraith and all we're doing here is just getting a little bit of it out so we can not make so much of a mess. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is inside the motor here we have in this case a bearing. Now, some motors have a bearing, some motors have a bushing, doesn't matter in terms of hobby use. Um, better quality motors will have a bearing, racing motors will typically have a bearing. 
And in this case, this bearing is rusted. Um, and it's probably rusted solid or very close to it. So we're going to be replacing that bearing as well. Now, for these brushes, you can see, and there's a couple of different types of brushes on how they're held on, but these are held on with screw posts. So we can again unscrew these posts. Take our positive one off. And there you see how it's held on. So just simply the post went down through the loop and down into the end bell. Now because this brush is dead, we're just going to throw that away. Um, but normally we would keep a hold on to the brush. And we'll do the same thing on the negative side. And then we can set our end bell there for cleaning later. So. Now we've got a whole lot more grit inside the motor. Let's get some of that out. Okay, so just a couple of bits here. First off, we have the commutator, which is where the brushes were rubbing against. That is part of the armature assembly. And inside the can here we have a locking ring. And you'll notice that there's some U-shaped indentations here coming out of the can, and there's some U-shaped indentations on the locking ring. So all we need to do is to twist the locking ring until those line up. And then we can remove the ring. And that's got a spot there. Now, one of the things that this tray is also good for is it can take a look and show you if this ring is bent or twisted in any way. And if you set this down, we can kind of see, it's hard to see from your angle there, but it certainly is not flat by any means uh, if we're going side to side here. So that's another thing we'll need to look at. Um, these usually are supposed to be flat. Take a little more dirt out. And let's pull out the armature. Okay, we'll set that there for a moment. And inside the can, we have two magnets, one on either side. And then we have some rings here, some U-shaped rings, that basically press the magnets against each of the other ring and then hold it in place. Uh, so it's very much using a, a outward force to push them against the can. You can replace magnets if you had to, um, which is why those can be taken out, but it's not something that's easy to do. And again, we have a bearing, and again, we have a rusted bearing, because uh, this motor is used in the water, uh, so that's what happens. And we can set our can here. Now, if we take a look at our armature, um, this is one of the hand-wound series from Holmes Hobbies, and we can see we don't have any washers on the bottom side. We didn't have any washers in the can when we removed the armature, so we don't need to worry about those. On the top side, we have just a fiber washer in this particular case. So we'll set that here on our end bell washers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and clean this up a little bit and clean up the can, clean up the end bell, and then we'll take another look. And I can already see here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I do it this way maybe, if I set this up against here, you can maybe see that there is a gap there. And what that tells me is that the surface of this commutator is actually also worn a lot, and it's worn in a concave shape. So it's actually curving this way. It should be straight if it was new, fresh, and clean uh, and slightly broken in. But this has been worn quite a lot, which is again why we saw those brushes. So what we'll also do once we get this cleaned up is we will put it in the lathe, which is here, 
and get that straightened up, get any of the other chips and notches and marks taken out of it. And we'll put everything back together with new brushes and then we'll throw it on the dyno and see how it does.